Welcome to the Quick Stop F1 podcast. My name is Nyasha and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Joining me today, as ever, is producer Mario all the way from Puerto Rico. Sí, señor, sí, señor. Todo bien, todo bien. Coming to you live from Puerto Rico. That's why I've got the flowery shirt on if you're watching the podcast. Really happy to be here. Nash, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, uh, yeah, good, man. Hold on two seconds. Teddy, my dog. Oh, my God. Hello. You want to say hello to everyone? Say hello to everyone. There you go, Teddy. Okay. What's There's Teddy's favorite team? What's his favorite team? Uh, he supports Arsenal. Do you want to say anything, Teddy? No? I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Is okay. he a fan of Roscoe? He, uh, he probably start barking at Roscoe. To be honest, he's a bit, he's a bit aggressive. He likes to bark at boys, met and the girls. He, he's all so quiet and tame. He's a bit like his daddy. Um, so <laughs> if you're watching, thank you for watching. Make sure you're giving this video and this dog a like and a subscribe. We reached that three thousand. Yes, sir. Don't yes, piss sir. me off. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed. We had 3,000. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you go from like zero to like 3,000, 3,000 feels like a lot. So uh, it's crazy that 3,000 of you are subscribed. So thank you. Let's go to four now. That's the target. Can we get to four uh, in like by the end of the season? That would be awesome. Uh, so give us a like and a subscribe and make sure you're giving us a five star rating on Spotify, Apple Review. Uh, uh, Apple Podcast Review and you can sign up to the Patreon for the price of a cup of coffee and have zero adverts on a video and audio stream as well as merch and extra content. Today we're here to preview the Canadian Grand Prix. I gotta say something before you finish about the other stuff. I just want to say all the people who hate watch us just subscribe because that way you don't have to put in quick stop F1 into the search bar. It'll just show up when you have a new video so you can get quickly into your hate watching. I know so many of you love, love, love to watch yeah. and not subscribe, but just get it over with. You'll get a notification. You'll be able to be the first one out here hating yeah. on the takes. Just get it over that with. Is, that is true. That is true. And in fact, I think Chris gave me a stat the other day to say that there was I think two thirds of you are watching without being subscribed. So, you know, especially the hate subscribers, get the notification on, then you can find out straight away. Mm -hmm. um, Canadian Grand Prix, Canadian Grand Prix is a good Grand Prix. It's a lovely Grand Prix. One of my, uh, I want to say one of my favorite favorites, but it's a good one. Half street circuit, half race circuit, long straights, chicanes, slow corners, fast corners. It has got it all. Do you? Um, do you remember the first Canadian GP you watched? Or which one you have the first memory of? I've got, so the, on the last corner, they used, uh, the last chicane, they used to be like, uh, they used to call it, they call it Champions Wall. Wall of uh, Champions. Because yep. a lot of, yeah, Wall of Champions, thank you. So the, a lot of uh, F1 champions have crashed into that wall. I distinctly remember Damon Hill crashing into that wall, I think, yes, at sir. some point. Um, so that was, I think, one of my earliest memories of that race. Um, but other good memories of that race, obviously Lewis in 2007 in his sixth, uh, Grand Prix, uh, winning that race. Um, there's a story around that, but I think I'm going to make like a TikTok about it because it's incredible. Just, um, uh, yeah, he had zero hours in the sim, uh, and then, or a few hours in the sim before he'd got there, never raced there before. Uh, first race on equal fuel with Fernando Alonso when they used to have unequal fuel levels because of refueling. Uh, and uh, yeah, he ended up winning. So good memories of that race. You said 2007, 20... that one? 2007, yeah. 2000... 20... To make it even better, 2006, Alonso won. So 2007, Hamilton won. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and probably, yeah, Alonso was on his way to the title in 2006 as well. And then he went to McLaren and then obviously did not go that well. Um, yeah, some good races. 2011, obviously, always spoken about, um, I think, the longest Grand Prix ever. Um, really? In two yeah, is it 2011? I want to say 2011. Um, Jensen Button won. It was rain affected. Um, for, so, like, imagine Spa, but they actually got to race in the end. Uh, so, Jensen Button won, I think, after overtaking... Sebastian Vettel after he made a mistake on the final laps. 
Would you believe it? No. <laughs> he would never do that again. And then obviously he did in 2019. So, um, let, yeah, me get you, let me add some stuff because you are absolutely right. Longest race in F1 history, 2011 in Montreal, Canada. It lasted four hours, four minutes and 39 seconds. It's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> and the thing is, as well, that's one of those. You remember it because you're sat in front of a TV for yeah. four hours, bro. Four hours just sat there. 2011, where was I? I was I was still, I was in Sheffield still, yeah. Literally just sat in front of a, a TV for four hours. But big drama by the time it started up again. Um, I would suggest going back and watching it. But go back, make nice. sure the one that you watch cuts out where they stop for two hours because it's raining basically don't watch one which is four hours <laughs> and they're just riffing for two hours on commentary you don't want that yeah. um so yeah yeah some good good memories what was your first first memory of uh, canada honestly i don't even have one just because i i think the first one i i watched was even before drive to survive and i was still dipping my toes into it um, so okay. that's why I asked you, because I, I feel like between us, I always like to get contests from you since you're so experienced with it. Um, yeah, it's just a coincidence that you mentioned the walls of the wall of champions, because I read that Damon Hill, Schumacher and Jack Villeneuve was on night in 99. Do you think that's the one you're talking about or is that too far back? That must have been. I think that's my earliest because before that, I can't really remember. Like, so I first my first full season was 96. And even then, my only real memories from that are. Japan when Damon Hill won and I think Barcelona when Michael Schumacher won um both because they were quite momentous things Schumacher won by like a minute or some shit in the rain uh and Damon Hill won the title in Suzuka and my my, my ew, Murray Walker's uh, iconic commentary uh I have to stop right I have to stop now because I've got a lump in my throat so that's like oh. a RIP to a real one man oh my yeah. god so um, what do you think is more? So, what do you think Lewis Hamilton values? So Lewis, I, I I'm not gonna do the whole stats thing, but the, I read some stuff. For example, Lewis and Michael Schumacher are tied most wins in Canada with seven. Yeah. Which do you yeah. think is like? Do you think Lewis loves the first one more than any other, or do you think he loves the most recent one? Uh probably first one's obviously gonna be like very memorable. I remember there was one race. I think he equaled Senna's pole record, Dang. if I'm not correct. And they gave him a helmet. I want to say that was in Canada. Uh, um, yeah. Um, so I feel like whatever race that was, was probably quite important for him. I want to say maybe, God, 2018, 2017, maybe. Um, but... Um, but yeah, I think yeah, I think Lewis has got a lot. I think he will actually have the record for the most amount of record wins at a single circuit. I think they're tied on two, uh, and then he will have three circuits that he has the most wins on, um, which is crazy because that's a lot of wins that he's had. What's crazy to me is you get all the years correct. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> I just checked it. I just checked it. Lewis Hamilton receives the helmet. He's speechless. He's honored. When was it? 2017 Canada. There you go. There you go. Vivid memories. <laughs> I'm sure it's a very vivid memory for, for Lewis as well. Yeah. Um, so, right. There's been a few bits and bobs leading up to this week. I guess let's start with... Where do you want to start? Should we start with Red Bull? Let's start with Red Bull. Um, People love that. Yeah, they love that. Uh, let's get the hate watchers something to watch. So, <laughs> so... Uh, Red Bull have essentially uh, been poached, okay? So uh, in the past, Helmut Marko bragged about the amount of stuff that they poached from Mercedes, uh, especially from their engine uh, section or department in Brack Brackley. That's the one. Oh, no, Brick Brickworth. I can't remember. Brixworth or Brackley. One of those two. Um, I feel like it's Brixworth. And uh, to go to Red Bull powertrains. And what goes around seems to come around because now Red Bull staff are being poached left, right and centre. And Christian Horner has come out and said the following. Jesse, do you have it there? Or shall I get it up? You, I've got you, it up. Yeah, you got it up. I've got it up here. So Christian Horner's bemoaning the cost cap, basically, and saying that essentially, here is the quote, 
You have to make sure it's not a race to the bottom. The headline reads that Christian Horner admits that F1's cost cap is obliging teams to rethink their staffing strategies, especially with regards to high paid employees. So if you don't know with the cost cap, your three highest paid employees uh, do not count under that most likely, and the drivers. So within that, obviously, Christian Horner, Helmut Marco, and Adrian Newey, their salary is not going to come under the cost cap, but everyone underneath does come under the cost cap, which is, I think, around $145 million. So I guess, Mario, mm -hmm. do they I... have much of a leg to stand on, I guess, it is, is, is the question that I'll put to you on that. This right here is what I call the classic Christian Horner lack of self-awareness. I can do whatever I want, and then I'm going to complain about what I did two years later, and then I'm going to make reverse it then. I'm not even, like, I'm not even disrespecting Horner. It's just, I would be proud. Look, man, people are poaching your people because, hey, you did well. You succeeded. You, you, you're out here. You're out here. But it's, it's, too, it's too, too much. It's, so, it's a lack of self-awareness to a level where it's, uh, he, he has no shame. Like uh, he he will tell you <laughs> today. He will tell you today. The sky is blue, and tomorrow he will tell you it is red, and he will die in that hill. Well, let me tell you now. Shame is definitely not something Christian Horner has. <laughs> because did you see the state of his barbecue, bro? Oh my <laughs> god! Oh my god! That barbecue is the saddest thing I've ever seen. How are you married to a Spice Girl and not a single herb and spice is on that? I, and there's so many technical issues. You know what? As a chef, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up now the technical issues I'm seeing on this. And I'm telling you now, I don't think a single thing was cooked on this barbecue. Like, I refuse to believe. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm going to start Get with the rosemary sprigs on the steak. Okay. Leaving aside, I don't think there's any oil on those steaks. I don't think there's any salt on those steaks. I don't even think there's any pepper. Look, there's the joke about white people not knowing how to flavor their food. And by white people, I'm going to narrow that down to, in this case, white British people. I live here respectfully. There is a seasoning issue, okay? I don't think it would be but, super far off if you include white Americans. Well, yeah, I'm moving there, so I'm trying to. I mean, I don't want to upset people. I'm leaving this place. Give burning the bridge, this, burning that bridge. Yeah, I'm <laughs> fixing the other one. We're good. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, not a bit of salt, pepper, oil on that fucking thing. How is that good? I mean, I guess it could just probably cook. You know, it's on fire. What I don't get is how are you garnishing a steak that has. No flavor, it's not even been cooked yet. When he flips that barb, when he flips that steak, the fucking rosemary is gonna go in the fire. I don't get it. Anyway, moving on. No, I just want to add like how how is no? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, after you, after you. What were you saying? No, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I thought you were done with like the the food, but I forgot. I was I, done. I no, 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 no. no. With, uh, there's so much on it, Mario. Nobody, nobody's talking done. about the neck. <laughs> nobody's talking about the neck. Like the barbecue is terrible. Is, oh my god, he's got a fucking. He popped up his neck on the pole. Oh, well. I Everything's mean, wrong with it. That, anyway, sorry. Nah, anyway. you ain't been to a British barbecue unless you've seen a middle-aged man in a, in a polo top with the, with the, with the, with the things up like Cantona. Uh, for reference, Eric Cantona, a French football player, used to play for Man United. That was like the coolest thing in the world, right? He came over to England and England, they never really had foreign players. So he's one of the most original foreign players and he used to have his, his like, Collar up like that. That yes. was his thing. And it was basically the coolest shit in the world, yeah? And that's Christian Horner. Also, what is that? Is that a polo? Oh, hack it. Of course, it's a hack it top. Um, yeah, I mean, everything on it. The chicken looks like it is fighting for its life, bro. <laughs> like, do you mean? This is... Th if it, like, you see the people from Petter go at Lewis Hamilton. They need to go at Christian Horner. That is animal cruelty. Like, I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. I just honestly, that well, fucking. Barbecue. We should tag Peter. We should tag Peter. Please, yeah. You guys harass this man. Mm -hmm. The burgers are so big. I don't know how he's going to cook them over a flame. He's got some massive bell mushrooms there, which I just honestly, I feel so bad. All the money in the world, he looks so happy with this barbecue as well. Like the little smug look on his face. 
I don't think he's cooking any of that. I would love to see the finished product. What I will say is, though, his house looks fucking incredible. You've seen yes, the sir. ground. Yes, sir. The background looks amazing. Oh, my God. I mean, they've showed it in Drive to Survive. It is a very nice house. Oh, Pro- yeah, Probably, probably the Spice it, Girl did everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be fair, those royalties are probably coming in. But, oh, my God. Anyway. Yeah, no, Christian Horner. I think Red Bull, look. I think Red Bull um, are... Are finding out. I think for me, Red Bull had this whole thing of we're the underdogs, we're the underdogs, we're just fighting. Christian Horner's on Drive to Survive, literally going around like Randall from Recess, snitching on any and anything. everything Mercedes do, purely to fuck with Mercedes, right? There's articles, there's there's literal receipts of Christian Horner saying we need to save F1. Mercedes are dominating too much. So for him to then bemoan people poaching from him when his own team not two years ago were bragging about it i just find it hilarious and this is what happens like oh can you hear that um this is what happens when people base their whole thing around being the underdog and i think for me when you become the man uh you then have to realize you know you've got to pay the cost to be the boss mm-hmm. and, I've got, and the cost of that is the fact that everyone wants to essentially poach your staff so i just find that i find that very funny but we'll see do you think it'll affect them in any way obviously they have Nui, so that's you know the biggest deal mm-hmm. of all but i don't see how i don't see how it wouldn't affect it um i don't this is such speculation but it, it's interesting like I, I would be very interested in in checking like how big of a raise are these people getting? Does the culture inside Red Bull have anything to do? Why people are like willing to leave? And and again, it's a, it's a business. People go to other places to be more successful. Totally get it. But are they really getting that much money since everybody has the same cost cap, same budget? Well, this is the thing. Like, well, I think what we're going to start seeing in F1 a lot more is <clears throat> a lot more redundancies, unfortunately. Christian mentioned in that same article that Someone that they made redundant, I think a special special advisor, is now working for Mercedes. And Mercedes themselves had to make a bunch of redundancies yeah. uh, before the cost cap came in. And I'm sure some of those people wound up in other places. But obviously that would mean that, you know, the job market itself, I think, you know, I've heard that, you know, it's essentially potentially shrinking the F1 cost, yeah. uh, shrinking the F1 job market. Mm-hmm. So... But also, these are highly skilled engineers, people in professional, you know, professional industries. You know, there w- there's always going to be work for these people, but, you know, at the same level of money and, you know, whatever, yeah. maybe not. So I guess we'll see. We'll see on that. I think your point um, is... It'll be interesting to see. Your point is, is perfect. It's like the job market will shrink. Like there's there's no... Uh, there, if and abroad, like with the budget cap. Crazy that yeah. job market shrinks, but comp- competition doesn't get m- that much better. <laughs> wow, that was the whole point of it, right? Was People that lost their jobs for this competition. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you, it's it's uh, it's one of those things where mm, yeah, we'll see. I, I, it's hard for teams to adapt. You look, we're looking at Mercedes, and yeah, Christian Horner saying that Mercedes must have spent two thirds of their budget on this W fourteen B. Um, and it just makes it, everyone's pretty much, I mean, you get to this point in the season, if you're not in the title uh, hunt, then you're probably just going to switch focus to next year. And so, you know, but that also means Red Bull have already switched focus to next year. So how much convergence is there really going to be next year? I think we're going to have to wait and see, but interesting to see nevertheless. In your experience, your opinion, do you think we will get, obviously Max is going to be at top, blah, blah. Do you think this season, these teams are going to get more? or less competitive? Uh, I think Mercedes will get more competitive as they kind of work through issues. Ferrari just seems to be going backwards. So I think they'll hit a rock bottom and then move towards everyone. Aston Martin, I do feel like, I think they're having upgrades coming soon. Fernando Alonso did talk about them. So let's see. I'm not, I'm not overly confident. Let's just say that. Um, Look, Speaking of competition converging, Stefano, Stefano De Manicali had some really good choice words to say. So we'll discuss those right after a word from our sponsors. Oh, God. 
Right. Something, something so, that I interrupted just to tell you what a professional you are, man. Like yeah. that segue to an ad break that that was five stars. I've been doing this for a minute. That's what people need to realize. <laughs> um, so, uh, Stefano Domenicali had an interview with the official F1 website. Mm -hmm. So obviously, impartiality <laughs> has Nobody. gone out of the. I've gone out of the window. There, I'm sure he was asked the hard hitting questions. <laughs> um, by the people who Abu Dhabi it, definitely uh, came up. Abu Dhabi definitely. Came yeah, up. yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah, his uh, his subordinates definitely <laughs> were not fearing for their life in this interview. <laughs> Stefano Domenicali has said uh, around whether they need to introduce measures to bunch the the grid up, whether that's a technical directive on Red Bull or something which will essentially help other teams close the gap to Red Bull, and he's come out and said. It would not be fair to change the rules in response to Red Bull's dominance. It's not correct because we cannot be seen as a sport of manipulation. This is not, not correct here. and not this in is this not house. fair. Not at all. I'm not envisioning at all this kind of approach. So, I mean, one, I guess your thoughts on F1 not being a sport of manipulation. No, that reminds me of, of how F1 is definitely... Uh, the, I saw the I'm very sorry because I'm going to quote a tweet, but I, I don't remember exactly who said it. Mm -hmm. But when there were news about like a scripted F1 show, yeah. somebody had a tweet that they started recording in Abu Dhabi and that tweet killed me. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't, <laughs> look, look, do I want do, would I would never I would never want a directive that goes against a team. I wouldn't want a directive that handicaps Red Bull. But whether they are regulations that can change to improve competition, I don't think that's manipulation. I do think that it is very sensitive doing mid-season, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would have been perfectly okay with him saying, doesn't make sense to do it this season. We've already started. We're already on the way. But we're going to look at it next year, for next year. I think yeah. that, that would be a good answer to me. Um, this whole, it's not manipulation, I think it's like, Imagine I imagine you I project onto like I say like you're such a like if I project something that's about me to you and it's literally nothing to do with you actually like I would never yeah. like you would never mention it uh, I would never mention it unless I felt it or unless I knew it or unless it was in my head so yeah calling this a not a sport of manipulation means that that man had the sport of manipulation thing in his head so he had yeah for sure it's kind of like when Vettel fans kind of like come at us and like mention stuff about like having the fastest car and mm -hmm. you know bottling world championships in Abu Dhabi well I didn't mention that but I think that's because their driver has bottled world championships in the fastest car in fact bottled races in the fastest car and they're putting that on me and you know what that's fine in the words of Akon you could put the blame on me, okay? That's absolutely <laughs> fine. I don't mind that. I love that. Please keep the interactions going on our page. We get 1.1 million impressions a month. You're adding to it. I love it. So, just want to say that that me, number, 1.1 million, it counts haters, lovers, that's everything, guys. All, like, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's definitely. Thanks for the help, guys. Yeah, just uh, when will you realize the more that you hate stuff? it finds the people that like it and then they like it and now twitter if you hate something it's just going to show it on your for you page so you're just going to see me more and more and more anyway <laughs> so manipulation yeah. yeah look that was funny i think uh I, in all honesty i'm done talking about abu dhabi so yeah, i think fair, fair, fair. I, you know it is what it is at this point um, we all know that it was a fuckery. I'm very sure that it was fixed. I don't really care what anyone has to say. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it was fixed in a way that they premeditated it before the race. Obviously, it would have been impossible. You know, oh, yeah. you can't predict someone like this. He feed. Wow. You can't predict uh, it with 100% certainty. <laughs> no, yeah, you can you can forecast it, but you can't you can't predict it. So uh, I think, but what I do think is that at at that point in the race, they had a choice. 
mm-hmm. to let it finish behind the safety car. They knew what the rules were, but they decided that, and they knew that. It, you know what? For me, if they did a one lap race and they were on equal tires, I'd have been like, "This is fucking." Wow, fair yeah. play. This is yeah. going to be a madness. No DRS. He's got slipstream. They're on equal tires. That would have been amazing. That's the but, end scene of Fast and the Furious right there. Like, that would have been dope. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Except there's no fucking train going across the tracks or whatever, right? Like, So for me, they manipulated it. They knew Max was going to win. Mm-hmm. Like they knew. It was, it was impossible for Lewis to keep Max behind on those tires. They knew Max was going to win. They knew what that would result in. They knew, I think they underestimated the furor that would have happened for it. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's my opinion on it. A lot of people have different opinions. And I think, look, it doesn't mean that I don't think Max did anything wrong because all Max done was driving a car. I that's a very Red good Bull point that I think wrong. people don't think about. He he did yeah. what he, he did what a race driver would do in his yeah. position. And I think, look, it would have been nice if he'd come out and been like, you know. Kind of, kind of, you know, I, I'm happy I won, but that was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't. And I think that's stoked. And fair play to him. He, well, he doesn't give a shit. So, like, but what I do think is the sport itself is absolutely grubby and needs to do better. <clears throat> anyway. Instead of, the, rigged, instead of rigged, I think you, you said it, like, they knew the, they knew the, the outcomes of both choices. Yeah. And I think there's a certain implicit bias that led them to one of the choices versus... Yeah, of course, right? Exactly. And I think, you know, I'd have loved to see what would have happened if the situation was reversed. Like, but we'll never know. In the words of Kanye West. I'm doing a lot of in the words of the reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, I would say I don't want a technical regular... I don't think in the middle of the season you can't do anything. A lot of people would point to the floor directive uh, in 2021, before 2021 which changed the rake kind of situation and obviously impacted Mercedes, favoured Red Bull, brought them close together. You know, at the time they were saying it was for safety reasons. I don't really believe that. Um, And so they have done it before and they have done regulation changes before. You know, Lewis Hamilton won through multiple regulation changes, Mm -hmm. you know, sorry, technical directives rather than big regulation changes. Um, Let's expand on, on, you said said that the regulations hurt Mercedes. Uh, favored Red Bull. Do you think it favored or hurt any other team? Because Aston Martin is doing really well uh, this year. Does that have any any relevance to regulations? No, so, or it, 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 so if you look at 2021, the the people that benefited from the rake uh, situation was uh, Red Bull. Um, basically, any car with like a low, I want to say a low rake. Was it a high rake? I can't remember. But basically, any car with like a, a, a low rake, I think, because I think they lowered it. A, a rake is how high your car goes up. From yeah. Like crudely from like front tire to back tire. That yeah. kind of triangular kind of space from the floor to like the, you know, the, the top of the floor. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So um, I think Red Bull Benefit, I can't remember off the top of my head anyone else. I'm, we yeah. need to get one of the technical guys. And not from memory, I can't quite remember. But it, but it impacted... It impacted Aston Martin. Was it Aston Martin then? Um, slash Racing Point. Racing Point basically had copied Mercedes' car in 2020. To great, right? Yeah, to great effect. And then by the time it got to 2021, they obviously had this design and then they went backwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's like proof again that it was kind of to do with the rake. So anyway, we'll see. But I'd love, I'd love for it to happen. But... I don't think it will. And also, what you don't want, this is Mercedes fans, be careful what you wish for. We asked for a floor directive last year to help with the poor pursuing. We thought that, you know, Red Bull were running an illegal four. It made them faster, it made us slower. Mm -hmm. They could bring in something which is supposed to make us faster. We've been working on something now. We're working on like the W15. They could bring something in that fucks us up. So I think... I can understand why Toto's saying let's not change anything because mm-hmm. we need a stable set of regulations so that we know what we're working with. And I guess we have to trust the team to fucking sort it out. <laughs> In the words of Christian Horner, sort your fucking car out, Toto. Yeah. And and then we go from there. Like, so that's that's my thoughts on that. But 
It's a tough one. It's a tough mm-hmm. one. I, I get why people want it. Look, it's boring as fuck. Red Bull could win every fucking race this season. And no one wants that, man. No one wants that. So do you think, but, do you, you think know, anyone from F1 would say, like, if Red, Bull, if Red Bull actually, let's say they win every race minus one, do you think F1 comes out and says this was a good season? Yeah, they will. I think they'll, they always will because they have a product to sell and they'll, they'll sell it as technical genius and from Newey and driving brilliance from Max Verstappen, right? Um, and they'll celebrate that and they'll big it up and, you know, and the fans will celebrate and they'll big it up in a way that they never did with Lewis. Yeah. It's funny that, you know, fastest car merchants, when Lewis was ha- was had the fastest car, all of a sudden, oh, it, it, it's like Max Verstappen's driving the fucking Flintstone car. It's like <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. fucking powering it with yeah. his feet. And it's like, I don't get it. Like, why Why does it make it... De- why can you not acknowledge that Lewis had a fast car and was a very quick driver the same way that Max has a very fast car and is a very good driver? But they have to put Lewis down. We all know why. I, can't yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, I have, I, have a, I have a guess why. Yeah, it's, look... People hate Lewis Hamilton, and I get it. I get it. Some people will say it's because he's too flash. Some people will say he's arrogant. Some people will say he's an attention seeker. Some people will say that he ruined F1. I would say that there's probably at least a lot of unconscious bias within that in terms of how people view black people. In you know what you're describing. You're describing the reasons people love LeBron James, the reasons people love Steph Curry, the reason people love a lot of basketball players. Jimmy Butler, for example, just popped off in the finals. That man is the most arrogant NBA player in the world, and people wow. love him for it. So, well, that's but that's okay. So you, that's a good point, and let's discuss that. Those are all black people in America, and America mm-hmm. no, is yeah, probably absolutely. the one country why I need to fucking get over there mm-hmm. because in Britain. You're not allowed to be extrovert. You're not allowed to be someone who goes against the grain, especially if you're a person of color. That's actually frowned upon. And that's a very European thing as well. So F1 being a European sport in origination, and, you know, it's, you know, I think we can safely say, yes, whilst there are a lot of Americans that watch it and listen, big up our American listeners and followers, the culture in Europe is completely different to America. Lewis Hammond, there's a reason why Lewis Hammond is celebrated in America yeah, and not celebrated as much in the UK. People point to his knighthood, whatever, but for him to have had to win seven world titles before he got that, Andy Murray won one Wimbledon title and got knighted. Like, it's it, like, I'm just saying, but that was a big achievement in tennis as a national sport. But anyway, so I just think there is a lot of unconscious bias within how people view black people. And I think that comes off on Lewis Hamilton and I think that um, that will affect how people view Hamilton and Verstappen, right? And that's fair. And a lot of people say that that's got nothing to do with it. And that's fine, you know. A lot of the times when we're talking, if it doesn't apply to you, then fine. Yeah. And then if it does, if it touches a nerve, then fine. I don't get how people are allowed to hate Hamilton with all their heart. And I'm not even allowed to say anything mildly critical about Verstappen without it being like a... Anyway, so, moving on. Mm-hmm. They need to sort something out. Hopefully they do. I don't think they will. But I also kind of feel like we should keep the regulations at standard. Yeah. Standard kind of running. So that people can learn about them and catch up. There's only so much Red Bull can do there's more everyone else has to do. And I think the more that it's stable, the more that will happen. Look, they're going to change everything up in 2026. Ah! I'll talk about that actually on another show. But engine suppliers, who knows how the engine is going to come out in 2026. We don't know that. So that's going to be a big change. We've only got two and a half seasons left of these Mm -hmm. regulations. And like we mentioned in the last pod, they might change it up. What was the other thing we were going to talk about? I didn't make any notes. So was it? It was. Uh, it was this. It was what we just talked about, and we were going to discuss not Williams, not Lando. Uh, not, oh Williams. well, I did want. Be, well, you think I do need? You know, I think you you definitely have a, a really really complicated answer to this. 
But would you, do you care or would you like to talk about uh, the news that Vettel will be in the Nürburgring? The Nürburgring. Do I care about Sebastian Vettel in the Nürburgring? No. Don't care. Couldn't care less. <laughs> Moving on. <Just> <laughs> Moving on, like honestly, <laughs> don't care. Like, and I'm happy for Seb. Yeah, I find I, I find the way that people talk about Seb weird. Like, he's a grown man and he gets babied a lot, and uh, some and, he, and he's out there with someone. And you know, what? I think a lot of the Formula One drivers get babied, and like you have to realize that these are grown men. Like, a lot of them are babies, though. Huh. A lot of there's a, like a twenty year old there, so like that is, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. So I guess like the old ones, like Ricardo gets like infantilized, that, absolutely. Like Lewis gets absolutely. infantilized a lot. Totally. And it's just like you know, these are grown ass men, like do you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. um, so. But that's what happens when you have fans, right? And you have you know, uh, like we discussed, like a cult like fan. Okay, look, uh, the third thing that we were get... the thing that we were going to talk about is George R. George Russell's comments. Oh yeah, George, 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 I helped. George. Okay. No, I, I will. I want your opinion on it. Um, correct me if I say anything wrong. I believe that George Russell came out and said, you know, out of the 20 drivers, there are three drivers that are that maybe are a little bit more aggressive than the others and don't follow the same rules that the other ones do. Is that correct? Am I saying it correct? I've, I've got the quote here. Perfect. So there may be three drivers on the grid who you wouldn't feel comfortable going against. There's a trust between most of the drivers, I don't think those three unnamed drivers have the same spatial awareness of others. Honestly, uh, I think it, it doesn't seem like an insult, but imagine you're like those drivers saying a driver doesn't have spatial awareness, an F1 driver, that feels like a pretty solid insult. That's a big insult. Right? Because that, that's like, that's like saying, well, George is British, okay? So you All have right. to understand Passive aggressiveness, sarcasm, like in Britain, our English, English in America is very much what you see is what you get. Everything's yeah. above the table. You know you're getting. <laughs> English in England, it's even more of what you don't say is what you're saying. So saying someone lacks spatial awareness is essentially saying someone is incapable of driving a car. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like you mean, you're, you're saying that even if they wanted to have the capabilities of driving an F1 car, they don't because it, and look, let me tell you now, I am dyspraxic. I walk into things, I drop things. My spatial awareness is fucking zero. Okay. I cannot, I honestly, I walk into doors. I like, I, I honestly, I'm a mess. Okay. I love it. Like I just, it's it's something I've lived with now for more my life. I lose things. Like I put something down and I forget where it is. And I, I like honestly. So I get it, but I'm not a Formula One driver. Yeah. Uh, who do you think the three are? Uh, I mean, obviously Max because he just had his thing with him. Yeah. Uh, you think he's petty enough to think about Bottas because of the accident that he has with he had with him? A lot of people have said Bottas, but oh yeah. That let was me, let his me fault. And I think I think he's come out and said that that's, that was his fault. Yeah. Okay. So so I would say Max obviously um I I, I didn't think about it, but I do like Kevin Magnuson as a yeah. choice. And I don't know, man, because Lance Stroll has had quite a few situations. Yeah. And I, I don't think a rookie is fair because Nick, Nick DeVries would be an easy answer because of this stuff. But like he's a rookie, so like I don't think so. Yeah. So I'm gonna no. end up at Max, Kevin Magnuson, and Lance Stroll. If I was gonna, I actually originally said, came. I said Max Stroll Ocon, um, and I think. That you saying K Mag and people saying K Mag has made me take out. Ocon. Yeah, I only I said Ocon is because Ocon will late move under braking yeah. all fucking day. Like he don't give a fuck, but it's hard. And but it is on the borderline affair. K Mag has had incidents with Lewis twice in two races. I think mm-hmm. last season at some point. I think if George has had to race with him. He gets into a lot of contact, K Mag. His whole career he has. Yeah. Stroll as well. Like Stroll, Stroll nearly sent. 
Yeah, yeah. Stroll would nearly send Vettel to the the other realm like last season a few times. Like so, mm-hmm. um, so I think definitely Stroll. Honestly, George, the call is coming from inside the house. Like, <laughs> like I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> like George, uh, you you crashed into Lewis in qualifying last year, last yeah, race. You had the incident with Bottas. You have had contact. You span on your own under safety car and then cried about it. Like, I'm just saying, George, you know. Takes one to no one, bro. <laughs> yeah. The talk, you know, within. Sometimes you have to look within. Sometimes, you know, I just came out of a relationship last year. I had to look within before I found anyone else because I had to do the work on myself george is bouncing from relationship to relationship <laughs> getting on twitter it's all their fault it's all their fault <laughs> and i think sometimes george it could be your fault sometimes it, it could be fault. sometimes you are the bad guy um i like about right. his message to add insult to the insult that he actually did is like the way he worded it is very like this is not me all drivers uh, think this. yeah I would, I would love to know what the question was. Um, I'd love to know what the question was and why he thought that would be an appropriate answer. To be honest, like, well, that's like the least PR sixty three thing he said for a minute. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, yeah, it's not a coincidence just, that it happened pretty, pretty soon after he had his thing with Max, which is like very difficult to say max isn't one of them but i will say like i think max is a great driver and i'm sure max has spatial awareness i just think max doesn't decide to use that spatial awareness sometimes i think max is very entitled max max thinks that people should not fight with him that people should get out of the way i think max has all the spatial awareness in the world he just doesn't use it sometimes yeah you know you have to leave the space for me to have my own spatial awareness. Mm-hmm. Clearly. Um, all right, let's do predictions. Yes, sir. Uh, give yes, me sir. a bold prediction for the Canadian Grand Prix. Stroll isn't finishing. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's his home race. He's not finishing. Well. I'm sorry to say. Uh, oh, God. Is that DNF like, is going to hurt like crazy, bro. It is. I don't think he's... I'd love for him to get a sneaky podium. Look, and the Aston Martin is quick enough to get a podium. So, it's... You know what? I'm going to go in or out. I'm going to go for a stroll podium. Um, (laughs) Let's see. Let's see which one of us is right. I'd love for one of us to be right. That would be awesome. That would be really cool. Um, So, yeah. Awesome. Wicked. If one of us is exactly right, we, we have to bet something. But that's the thing. Whenever I get a prediction right, I'm like, oh, I should have bet on it. But I'm like, if I bet on it, it wouldn't have happened. So I'm like, it doesn't have to be money. We can just bet some silly stuff. We'll we'll, we'll work. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll yeah, we'll fi- we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But look, <clears throat> guys, if you've got this far, thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, make sure that you are subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate it. And it like honestly, it helps so so much. We've like gone super up in views and and um uh and comments and and all of those things so thank you guys so much we really appreciate it um like the video five star review on spotify apple podcast review patreon's there if you want to add free stream and we will see you on saturday uh after qualifying oh it's a bit late actually isn't it what time's is it? Let me... Sometimes, what time's Canada in my time? Oh my god, I didn't even realize. Oh my god, it's at nine o'clock. So, two o'clock, we'll see you. baby. Two p.m., yeah. baby. You're gonna get the best version of Mario, baby. Two p.m. Oh, that's oh, comfy. That is crazy. That is crazy. Just clocked. <laughs> so, we will see you after qualifying on Tuesday. On Tuesday, on Saturday, I'm already, I'm already flustered. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we've got a really cool guest on Monday, which I can't nice. wait to, to talk to, to talk to that person. But in the meantime, Mario, where can everyone find you? Uh, so everyone can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mario underscore APN. But I want to add that. I was very nervous during the podcast that I did with Tasha because I've only worked with you. And I just, I've said this before, but I just want to, I, I never thought that 
not because of anything negative just because like i came in as a nobody and like the having a show with tasha without you was very nerve-wracking because i, I think you know you are nyasha you are quick stop um but man how welcoming how great how nice how supportive your community has been to me um not to me obviously to all of us but like i just want to say thank you again um it, it really does mean a lot and your trust means a lot and yeah just wanted to thank everybody uh, who listens no honestly it was a really good episode i was uh, i had full trust in all of you including chris to to get the product out and um i think that's my one thing this year like i you know i think we skipped one episode um uh, when i was like super ill um but i think i'm in a position now where if i'm ill if tandy's ill if we're not able to do it um that uh we don't have to be here. And I think that's such an incredible thing to have. So I appreciate uh, all, three, <clears throat> all three of you. Uh, it was uh, a really good show as well. And the Quicksilver family are all really nice, man. So, and they love, they love Renewon. In fact, there's one person who absolutely loves you uh, and keeps letting us know in the comments. So <laughs> they're going to be ecstatic <laughs> that you're on the show today. Um, um, you at home, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And remember... No matter what life throws at you, keep it on the black stuff. Have a lovely, lovely day. Toodle peace. Look, mate, if you've got this far, clearly you like what we do. So here's a link to subscribe to the Quicksub Pef1 family. Give that a click. And here's another link to some more cool <laughs> on our channel. Sorry, cool, cool stuff, stuff, stuff. And remember, no matter what happens, keep it on the black stuff. Click the stuff. Click the click the links. Click the the link the links. Click the links. There. There there.